Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. So uh, this talk is about uh, a little bit about imagination and how you can make it a reality. So we'll talk about tomorrow, how we imagine a tomorrow uh, in three steps and make it happen. So we need to imagine, we need to innovate, we need to realize. I want to talk about each of these elements uh, in, in the process. So when you first imagine, uh, you need to think like you have no limitations, like you have unlimited amount of money. And uh, think about, you know, Elon Musk is, uh, he wants to go to, to Mars, right? And, and set up the colony in Mars. This is unlimited amount of money. Money cannot be uh, a factor. Or when, you know, the US developed uh, the atom bomb, or we are, when we did the DNA sequencing. So we have to imagine something that really breaks a barrier. Each one of you must have something that he imagines that he wants to really solve. So there's no limitation in the process of the imagination, right? Then there's the issue of innovation, right? You need to really innovate how you're going to solve this problem. Uh, there needs to be new ideas, new materials, uh, new processes, a new way of thinking about the future. And then comes the, really the hard part where life hits you. Okay, so there isn't enough money and somebody else has done something like this before and it didn't work and now reality hits. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these three phases of how uh, we went about the imagining a world where a cell phone charges in one minute. And this is something that we already realized and this is why we are going to talk about this today. Uh, a smartphone will be charged. I mean, forget StoreDot, this is the company that I'm doing right now. A phone will charge in five minutes. Also your car. This is happening. This is real. you take this same technology that is already demonstrated and now you, you implement it in a car and your Tesla or your Mercedes or whatever you have which is electric now the entire experience is just like fueling only obviously without the fumes so the whole anxiety of, of the range really goes away so when you can eliminate the range anxiety you can really uh, get people to adopt electric vehicles. There is no reason why we won't have all electric vehicles if there is no problem of range, right? So range can also be solved by fast charging. So let's say you are getting 200 miles in five minutes instead of 300 miles at the Tesla in 30, 40 minutes. Uh, then it's also uh, a good way to solve this problem. So now that we have this imagination, which, as I said, is already real, uh, we need to innovate. And innovating around such technologies is hard. This is not like an internet uh, application or, uh, you know, some, some uh, new Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, because we are hitting the limits of what the science, the chemistry and the physics really allow uh, in terms of the actual charging of a battery. So in order to do that, Again, assuming you have enough money, uh, which we now do. So we hired a number of PhDs. Today we are at uh, about 40 PhDs. Uh, that uh, each one of them is, is really a world expert in their field. 
and this can be biochemistry, organic chemistry, electrochemistry, uh, material science, quantum physics, device engineering, electrical engineering, all these guys sit together uh, around the table and design these new materials that can really break the limits of how charging is being done. So we also need labs. These people, you know, if they just innovate a new material, you need to be able to synthesize it. So what we have set up in Israel is a 2,000 square meter facility uh, of uh, organic chemistry and nanotechnology lab under the same roof. Now, typically you don't see these things together. Either you do the materials or you do the device. Uh, but for us, the, the whole process of rapid prototyping of a new material uh, is very unique. Like in a large company, and I worked in several large companies in the past, let's take even at Intel, for example, or at SanDisk, you know, you have a new material that you are trying to implement into your flash memory. Uh, this is a two-year project, right? You need management support, you need budget, you need to set up a team, you need to hire people. Uh, this is a very long process, and typically you are focused on a very limited scope of what you can do. Here we have new materials, new molecules that are being, being synthesized on Monday, and they are already in the battery or in the display or in the memory on Wednesday. Okay, and on Friday, we have feedback whether this is going in the right direction or not. So we took a, a holistic approach of how you need to redesign charging. Uh, we started with uh, the six basic elements that are required for fast charging. And in each of those, we have a dedicated team uh, that is working on a new approach of how to charge. It starts with a new cathode, a new coating and encapsulation mechanism uh, that uh, al allows for the cathode to be robust and, and flexible enough uh, during the ion's diffusion. An anode, which needs to protect the active material once you are uh, moving uh, the lithium ions uh, fast into the uh, 3D structure of the electrodes. The electrolyte needs to be a, a also high uh, voltage electrolyte uh, that can sustain the high currents and the heat that is being generated during fast charging. A new structure uh, of the uh, material itself, uh, the manufacturing process, which uh, we want it to be uh, aquatic based as opposed to NMP uh, uh, toxic materials that are being used today, and the entire electronics of how this battery talks to the charger and how you uh, dynamically shift from constant current to constant voltage and what is actually happening uh, during the charging process. So in the anode, uh, which I would say is uh, the greatest innovation, is to have these gradient layers uh, of protection of uh, active material that you coat it uh, with polymers and, and with uh, uh, unique materials that allow for the diffusion of, ion, of ions in one hand, but also manage the swelling that occurs during uh, the charging of the battery. So we are basically creating new compounds, new organic materials that have never been used before. Uh, and this is critical because if you are just in your methodology, if you just take things from off the shelf, then you hit some, uh, some limits of these materials. And this is why we have created this inherent capability of, of the uh, labs and the team to imagine a new molecule and then go and make it step by step, like you do in a biotech facility. And like in a biotech facility, you search for a drug or you want to have a vaccine for Ebola or Zika or what have you. So we don't have Ebola or Zika. We have a battery or a display or a flash memory that needs some special properties from these molecules in order to uh, have them uh, uh, perform the, what they need to do. So now we get to the really last part, which is the hardest one, how you make it happen. So you have, you have imagined the problem. You have innovated some ways to, to, to make it happen, but then reality hits. So uh, I want to talk specifically only about how we take now this technology and we are charging a car in five minutes. And many things need, need to happen in order to charge a car. It's not just the battery, but the battery is the critical element that today is missing for fast charging. So the first question is really, can, this ha can, can we make it happen? Because in a Tesla, right, you have 40 minutes for about 80% of the charge. 
and you already use a 120 kilowatt uh, charger, which is huge, which is a big burden on the, on the grid. But at the same time, there are companies, and there's also funding from the White House now coming, about $100 million coming for a design of 300 plus 350 kilowatt stations, because they understand that this, this will happen. And there are some uh, uh, companies in the US, like ChargePoint and others, that are working on 300 uh, plus uh, kilowatt uh, charging stations. But this is not enough, because in the entire ecosystem, you have the grid itself, that needs to manage the, these charging stations, because think about it. A half a megawatt station, you need to shut down the neighborhood in order to charge your car. So if you're not planning for this, this will not uh, be enabled with the current infrastructure. Same thing is happening on, on the left side here. You see what's happening with the car when you charge at home, because you also need to balance your neighborhood and the peaks and all that in AC charging, not in DC in the charging stations. So all these things need to happen in the infrastructure and governments, especially in China, by the way, are also working uh, very hard on this. Uh, in Beijing, for example, uh, that we are talking to the government there, they are already putting together fast charging stations and are looking at the uh, national grid system modifications that are required for uh, these large systems. Now, in reality, you also have to protect what you are doing. And we look at the car as a, as a mobile device, exactly the same way that you would look at the, at, uh, uh, at the mobile phone. So the, 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 the system itself, the entire car, the battery, the battery structure, the materials, the charging stations, the, uh, the BMS, the battery management system of how you manage the cells uh, and the health of these cells, and the charger, the connector uh, that uh, interfaces with the car. So we have, we've been filing patents all around this just to be able to take this to China uh, with some uh, limited protection. Also, in terms of charging, nobody thought that you would need to have minutes of charging for each 100 kilometers. So all the current uh, uh, standards today are limited to uh, slow charging. So really new standards are needed uh, to make this uh, happen as well. And we are working on this uh, five minutes and, and two and a half minutes uh, DC charging. And this is why I, I mentioned already half a kilowatt. If you're looking at 480 kilowatt uh, charging station, uh, this, is, this was imaginary a uh, few years ago. But people are talking about this uh, today once we presented this capability of the battery. Also, safety is a big deal, right? And especially what happened uh, recently with the Note 7 and, and uh, everything else that is happening in batteries in general. Batteries are dangerous. So if you look at what is uh, the process of the lithium ions that are moving into the uh, electrode, so on the left side you see a low charging rate. Well, you know, when you charge slow, there's typically no problem. The ions diffuse into the uh, graphite material, into the 3D structure, and there's no problem. But as you start to increase the charging rate on the right, and the iron starts to accumulate, they back up, like, you know, like you're trying to push people into the subway and there are not enough doors, right? There's an accumulation of these lithium ions uh, uh, on the surface of the electrodes. This is, this is called metallization. And this is actually what is happening when you are trying to charge fast and you are pumping, let's say, instead of one amp uh, into the phone, you are now uh, charging in two amps. So you're getting this buildup of metallization. Eventually, this is a dendrite. It uh, punctures a hole uh, through the separator between the anode and the cathode, and you have a short. And then the short is a thermal runaway, and you get uh, the possibility, uh, the likelihood of a fire. Um, we've looked at this in a way that we need the inherent capability of the material to diffuse the ions faster and not leave anything or almost anything on the surface. So the whole uh, reaction and interaction of the redox that is happening, the exchange of electrons for the lithium ion, is actually, actually happening inside the, the structure of the electrode. And therefore, we are gaining uh, the capability to uh, move those and diffuse the ions faster uh, into uh, the electrode. This, in this case, this is the anode. Once you charge, you move the lithium ions into the anode. So taking this to market, we are doing it in, in steps. We are first taking to market uh, this uh, smartphone battery. Uh, and we have received uh, uh, our lead uh, uh, funding from Samsung. 
So we are looking at the uh, batteries for, uh, for smartphones and the first uh, uh, battery that will be on the market next year. And now we are uh, working to uh, take this technology and implement it into the electric vehicle. Now, you know, in the vehicle, it's not like you need to make a huge battery. In the vehicle, like in a Tesla, you have 7,000 Panasonic cylinder cells, right? So we are going to do the same thing. We are taking this small cell and we are stacking them and managing them with a battery management system so you'll have the full capability uh, of the battery uh, inside the car. So this is a future, but it's closer than you think because it's happening in our labs. And I, I, I know from my experience, once you see something in the lab, it's only a couple of years until it's in the market, it's in hardware. I'm not talking about the biology that you, know, you need FDA approvals and all that. But for us, once you see a technology, it's going to be on the market. So the future is much closer than you think. People will charge fast everything. Drones, power tools, uh, toys, you name it. So I want to con conclude by thinking, each one of you can think about something that they want to do and how they want to imagine how they solve a problem. And imagine you have enough money, a hundred million, a billion, doesn't matter. Now, if you had this money, how would you solve this problem? What would you innovate? And then how you would take it to market? So this, I think, would be a good takeaway from today. Thank you very much.